we are going to transition to a couple questions uh, and topics that have been inspired by some of our followers and listeners. But before we get there, we do just want to give the caveat and the little disclaimer that none of the stuff that we talk about should be taken as medical advice or a substitute for it. This is all just educational in nature. Um, so if you are actually having um, symptoms of anything and you have questions specifically about your own pain, um, you should check out um, a local ortho PT in your area or go see your, your physician. So there's our caveat and let's jump into the first question. So this first topic uh, was inspired by one of our followers who sent us an email, uh, Ross McLaughlin. I just love that last name. It's like my, one of my favorite last names. Doesn't really matter. But uh, in the, the general topic that he's bringing up within his question is what can we learn from our outsole wear patterns? And what he talked about was his experience. Um, he wrote to us that he typically was in the Asics GT 1000. Um, and then he kind of switched over to the Arahi. He noticed that his wear pattern went from central through the shoe to a little bit more lateral. So he's starting to ask questions of, is this overcorrecting for me? Is it something I, sh can I stay? He really likes the Arahi. He said, should he stick with it? Um, does he, is it overcorrecting for, for something? But he feels like um, he's curious about that. He has not shared with us any other information about injury history or anything. So we're going to assume no injuries. Um, for this first part, but I think, Matt, let's start to tackle this question with what do we know about what is a typical progression through the foot um, as you roll through when you're running? Now, typical, what, what you'll find with most people is that you'll usually, if you are a heel striker, if, which is mo like 70, 80% of, of most runners, you'll land on the back or posterior outside, posterior lateral side of the foot. And you will then progress and roll through the four, you'll roll through the midfoot and then off the forefoot, off the toes. Where exactly you pivot off from that point will vary on the person. Um, there's, you do need to come back. You can't be totally collapsed because you do need to, you should pronate as you go through the midfoot a little bit to shock absorb. As you get off the forefoot, you're supposed to what's called resupinate, so get back in a little more central position. Pivot off somewhere like the first toe, like centrally is a good place because there's a lot of power that you can generate from there. Some people will pivot off the lateral aspect depending on who you are. Um, it just varies on the person. Going too far one direction or the other is where you can, you can and certain people have some problems. So if you're too collapsed as you pivot off the big toe, or if you're supinating too much and pivoting off the little toes, that can put some pressure there. But generally, it should be posterior lateral, lateral heel, roll through and come off, probably big toe uh, for the most part. And again, that varies because different surfaces and different shoes your body's going to interact with differently. Um, if you're not having any problems, that's where I wouldn't worry. And if uh, I wrote an article for Runner's World recently on this exact topic, and I spent days looking through the research on this. And I, there is nothing zero on coral. I'm like finding any correlation between wear patterns and injury risk and not even correlations. And remember correlation does not even equal causation. They don't even have correlations between different wear patterns in different mechanics. So it's a total guess. So I can say, yeah, if you're, if your wear pattern is starting to get a little bit more lateral, it might suggest you might be pivoting off the lateral aspect of your foot as you, as you toe off if you're having a forefoot. But we really don't know until we actually look at your mechanics. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, a tertiary thing, meaning it, 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 might, it, might, it might give us some hints, but it doesn't give us a clear answer. And I would say the biggest thing is if you're not having any problems, I wouldn't worry about it because we, one of the things we do know is comfort is really important in, in injury reduction and good running, right? Cause if a shoe sucks, you're not going to want to run in it. Uh, right. I should say, if it's not comfortable, you're not going to want to run in it. But I would say if you're enjoying the Arahi and you're not having any problems, you should be fine. It is a different shoe from the GT 1000. So yeah. uh, there's much, the stability in the Arahi moves much farther forward in the front, front of the foot. So it's not totally surprising, but if you're not having any problems, I wouldn't worry about it. And um, just one other thing to add from a general kind of pattern standpoint, you kind of talked about if you land in the heel, posterior lateral, kind of gliding a little bit more medially, and then maybe just to the inside and then slowly coming back to the outright at the end. Um, 
one thing that I have a lot of patients who come in, they say, Hey, look at, I land way on the outside of my heel. I'm over supinating. That's the phrase they use. And then um, it just goes through what we just talked about where landing on the outside of the heel is actually the normal spot to land. So just having wear in the lateral side of the heel does not mean you're a supinator. It means um, you're normal. That, it means you're normal that, that or you're a heel, you're a non, you're, you're a heel striker, you're a rear foot striker. The other thing is if you are, if you do land more forward, if you land in the midfoot or even in the forefoot, you likely are landing on the outside or the lateral side of the foot there. So likely your wear is going to be a lot of the outside of the, of the shoe near the middle of the foot, the midfoot or the forefoot. And again, that's a part where people are like, I'm, I'm supinating too much. Um, and, and really that's just because that's where your impact point is. And that's again, normal. So um, outside of, you know, like what Matt was saying, there's no correlations with certain wear patterns and injury rates. And I think at the same time, it doesn't necessarily tell us if you're supinating or pronating either, because the, the wear pattern um, can be on the outside when it's normal, definitely for supinators. I think what's interesting for Ross um, is that he has noticed a difference between two types of shoes. And so I think, like you said, Matt, you're noticing that, yes, a shoe can change how your how your body is interacting with the ground or the shoe is interacting with the ground. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad or good if it's still comfortable. And at the same time for him, he was talking about how he really just likes that Hoka feel. And since he has not been having injuries from what we know in the GT 1000, which is a neutral shoe. And then if he's also, it wow. has the trusted system, but yeah. it's, it's really, Maybe I'm wrong, but I I, see like, I think it's like light. I mean, they call it moderate, but I having run in that a while ago, it's like mild stability ish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Either way, I get I you. Think... You're you're kind of right though. It, yeah. Some for some people, it is. It's different than the Arahi for sure. But I think for him, you know, if he's not having problems in that kind of a shoe, he could think about like he talked about Mach Four. Try out. Try go. Try it on. Go see if yeah. it feels like it's giving you enough of what you want. Like if it feels comfortable and um, the wide base on Hoka does allow these neutral shoes to have for some people the right and the sidewalls, the right amount of stability that they enjoy. So I would say it's fair game to go try it if you're looking just for the Hoka feel, but you're not sure if the Arahi is exactly what you want. Um, maybe Rincon could be a good one because it's a little like Arahi and Rincon are a little bit firmer from in comparison to like, or even Clifton, but Clifton gives me blisters, so I'm I'm bitter towards the Clifton. I found I didn't find the Clifton. Weirdly enough, this version I didn't find very stable. So I, I that would unless you like it, it's one of those I would yeah. mock for mock mock definitely Rincon definitely because we got more of a traditional Hoka design. Arahi's good. All the, just find something that's comfortable, and we would always one of the things that we know from the evidence is always a good idea if you can afford it, which it's not. That's not always feasible. If you have a couple different shoes you can cycle through, that's even better, right? Because it's it, as you can see from your wear pattern, there is something that's different, right? Whether it's your actual ankle mechanics or where you're pivoting off from and creating the most friction, no idea, right? We don't know that from wear patterns. But if you know that there's some variation, that's actually not a bad thing to switch right. off between those two ones because it's, it's a, basically a form of cross training. It's redistributing loads instead of loading the same tissue repetitively. So. Yeah, the, rotating between the, the GT1000 and the Rahi might not be a bad idea. And if you like the mock, not a bad thing to throw in there as an up-tempo day shoe. So I'd say, again, don't worry necessarily about the wear pattern. Just go, hey, I know that I run differently. This might be a good shoe to, or uh, there's something, I shouldn't say I run differently. There's something different about this shoe. This might be a good one to have my rotation if it's comfortable to me and I like it. Yep. Yep. I think you, I'm stealing this from you, Matt. You said yeah. this to me before we even started recording, but you said looking at someone's wear pattern or talking about it is like standing a mile away from a house and being told to tell them what's inside the house. And so taking a wear pattern is not going to help you in, in figuring out what's going on inside the body. And that's, and, and that's, we're talking about someone who's not getting hurt, even in the case of someone who's injured as a clinician, we're not going to just take 
their wear pattern and then diagnose them from there. The, the wear pattern is for him, it's actually potentially useful to have two types of shoes that show different types of wear patterns. If that wear pattern does mean, and we watch him run and we look at his strength and we look at his pain patterns, if they all start to come together, then we can tell him what's inside the house. But the wear pattern is like Matt said, before we started recording, standing a mile away and trying to figure out right. what's the layout of the house. Right. Cause the wear patterns will tell you nothing about the actual like progression of your foot. It'll only show you after miles of where you're creating most friction, but it's, it's, this is over who are, who knows how many runs and how many footsteps you, if you really want more information, you need to have somebody, an expert take do a gait analysis or assessment, look at your strength, look at your mobility and put all those factors together. Cause to be honest, even those things individually don't give you the whole story. It's all of those factors combined that you'll be able to go, Oh, okay. That's what's happening. But if you're not having any injuries and it's really it's comfortable to you, I I wouldn't I wouldn't worry. I'd go, hey, this is probably a good shoe if it's comfortable. Let's let's keep going. 